Hello everyone. Today I am going to show you how to produce herbal tincture with the Soxlet extraction method. It's actually fairly simple. All that you need is a Soxlet extraction apparatus. It usually consists out of three components. Out of the um, boiling chamber. So it contains the actual uh, solvent. In my case it's um, a mixture out of ethanol and water. Then it's the, uh, in the middle of this apparatus here, the extraction tube. And this extraction tube is built up, um, what you can see here, here the steam rises up. Yeah? Here is the material inside that we want to extract. And uh, so the, the steam rises up, the steam will condense in the condenser. You don't see it here, you will see it in a different room. And then the liquid uh, extraction medium will drop down onto herbs or whatever you're going to extract. And then eventually the level of liquid will slowly rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. And when it's above here, then the liquid will all flow back into uh, this boiling chamber here. That means it's a continuous extraction. Uh, so you can achieve much higher values actually or actually you can co achieve complete extraction that for example you can't achieve with normal maceration because in, when you use maceration for herbal extraction uh, all you can get is an equilibrium that means half or whatever you know half of the um, the API, the, the active pharmaceutical ingredients or whatever you, are, you, you want to extract is into the solvent and half is still in the, in the herbal matter. Yeah? So with a Soxlet it's different, you can um, make actually a complete extraction, it only depends how long you let the extraction run. So usually um, I let it run for about 6 to, to 12 hours, it depends on the actual herb that I'm extracting. And um, for the, the solvent that I'm using, I'm, for most of the herbs I'm using about 70% ethanol uh, alcohol. Uh, because this is, this is a very good um, ratio between water and, and ethanol, so um, you can get most of the, the substances in, in solution. For example, if you are processing herbs that are very rich in saponines or, or some sort of sugars or whatever, it's not necessary to use that high amount of alcohol. Um, but there are some herbs, for example, with a lot of raisin, when you want the raisin, then uh, you need even more ethanol. Yeah? Uh, so it really depends what kind of substances you are after. For example, when you are after the alkaloids um, and uh, etheric oils and stuff like that, 70% uh, is a, a good ratio to use. Okay, the first step that we have to do is uh, we have to add this cotton patch and uh, I'm adding it over this tube here, so it acts as a kind of filter. It's actually already inside, so I'm not going to show you. Uh, the next step is basically to take whatever kind of material, in this kind there uh, are juniper berries, um, and fill it into the, the apparatus. We will do that. Okay, now the extraction tube is filled with whatever material we want to extract. Um, the next step is to put some silicone grease 
the ceiling here. Otherwise we might have problems opening it again. And for the boiling chamber here, it's also important to add um, something where the, the bubbles can start, otherwise um, it's very bad and we have spontaneous uh, overboiling or whatever kind of stuff. So what I usually do instead of adding some boiling stones, I just add a couple of pieces from the herb that we are going to uh, extract and that's fully sufficient. So they add as uh, or they, they, they suit as nucleation points for the bubbles and yeah that's where the bubbles will form and everything will go much more smoothly. So now we can put that stuff here. Okay and now we are ready to completely assemble the whole socklet system. Um, I'm going to show you that too. So as you can see here, the entire Soxlot system is now assembled together and now we can see the three parts, the actual condenser that's water cooled here, then the tube where the extraction happens and here is the boiling vessel where the concentration um, and evaporation and boiling happens. Yeah. So now in order to see some more action we have to wait until everything is boiling and until the actual uh, extraction starts which will happen in about 10-15 minutes or so yeah uh, I want to add a little bit information about the advantages and disadvantages between salt extraction of herbs and maceration the first thing that I want to look at is the duration of the operation. So when we have a look at maceration, then usually maceration is done for three weeks up to six weeks to achieve good results. While Soxlot extraction is actually finished between six and twelve hours. So you see that the Soxlot extraction is much faster than maceration but another disadvantage now is that for the soxal extraction you need much more equipment and much more energy so you need to have it boil so it consumes a lot of energy and also the equipment itself so the extraction tubes and the glassware and everything is kind of expensive so this is definitely a disadvantage because for maceration you just put the herbs in a vessel, put the solvent in the vessel and you leave it standing somewhere and it's, it's done then, you know, you just need to filter it, that, that stuff. So far to that. Um, another disadvantage of the Soxlot extraction is, for example, if you have some herbs that are sensitive, sensitive to heat, if the substances in the herb are sensitive to heat, then Soxlot extraction is not the way to go. Because in actual fact you see that um, the substances will boil for about 6 to 12 hours. But for herbs without heat sensitive um, substances, it's not a problem at all. There are ways to uh, circumnavigate these issues regarding the energy consumption and regarding the boiling temperature of the Soxlot system. And this is to have the Soxlot apparatus running in vacuum, respectively in partly vacuum. I have built a device and um, I will make a future video about exactly that. So I hope that shares a little bit light about the advantages and disadvantages between these two extraction types.